family trees, the loggers want to give it a facelift. They call it urban development. I call it deforestation. This is no country for old growth. We carve that which gives us oxygen and then wonder at the shortness of our breath. Before I knew myself as forest, I was just lumber, the raw material in someone else's bedroom furniture. When I learned to read the history in my bark, I felt pride, strong enough to challenge gravity. I felt gratitude, great enough to bear fruit. I heard the prayers echoing from the throats of five generations, demanding that the saplings grow up with a steady home, an education, and the feet to walk their own path. We can't all know the woodlands of our past, but someday we may be someone's past. One day when your granddaughter finds herself caught in a tempest, she will want to know the lightning and thunder that you've been through. She will ask, Grandpa, where do I come from? Grandma, where do I come from? I want to know where we come from. You will tell her, these woods are your library. Its leaves tell your story. The knots in your bark are not blemish. It is God twisting an inscription, holy like scripture. Thank you. Thank you, Jody, for that very powerful spoken word. Now I would uh, like to invite Andrew Pollock up to speak on behalf of Chorus, the young adult component of the symposium. Andrew. Greetings, everyone. My name is Andrew Pollock, and I am the 2023 Chorus Young Adult Conference Coordinator. Um, and I'm really excited to be here, and I'm very, very excited to report that uh, we have 30 young adults registered this weekend for the symposium. How amazing is that? And uh, in addition to attending the uh, proceedings of the symposium, uh, young adults also have their own dedicated stream of programming through the Chorus Young Adult Conference, um, including programming, uh, social time, and worship. And uh, I won't take up too much of your time. I just want to say we're excited to be here and to co-create community with each other and with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. We Unitarians are blessed to have a diverse, dedicated, and talented group of ministers who serve our congregations from coast to coast to coast. Speaking on behalf of the Unitarian Universalist Ministers of Canada, please welcome Reverend Samaya Oakley from the South Fraser Unita Unitarians and the new UMAC president. Wow, I get what you mean where you can't see anybody. It's pretty bright up here. I can't tell you how delighted I am to be here with you now. Let's just take a quick moment and breathe. A quick moment of silence. I bring you greetings from the Unitarian Universalist Ministers of Canada. My pronouns are she and hers. I currently live and laugh and love and work on the lands of the Semiamu First Nations, one of the many nations that come from the Coast Salish peoples. You may know those lands as Surrey, BC. I've still got a little bit of blonde in my hair as it's starting to turn a little white. I'm pairing, wearing a pair of rimless reading glasses, and I have a blue top on. As the newly elected president of the Unitarian Universalist Ministers of Canada, I'm here to provide you greetings 
to this symposium. You may be wondering who and what this organization of ministers is all about. We are a distinct chapter of the Unitarian Universalist Ministers Association, or UUMA for short. We have two main central ideas that relate to the vision and mission of our work as a chapter. <clears throat> our top priority is to provide collegial support, communication, and connections amongst the li ministers living and serving in Canada. We are not unique in this work, as it is a function of many chapters in the UUMA. Our second priority is to provide a visionary, prophetic, and spiritual voice and to uphold the fundamentally important role of ministry in the context of the CUC and Canadian Unitarian Universalism in general. We do this by collaborating with the CUC to enhance our presence as a faith tradition in Canada. That is a unique aspect of our work as a chapter. So my dear ones, as we head into this weekend of exploring what it means to live into the eighth principle, I bid you welcome. Let us enter this time together knowing that we do so to strengthen our connections, to kindle hope, and to move forward in love. May it ever be so. Before we move on to our next speaker, just a note for the youth that uh, you will need to leave at 7.30, which is in about two or three minutes. Um, you will need to go to the corner room to pick up your luggage and then go outside to meet the bus to take you to First U. Now, Reverend Ann Barker, who serves Capital UU Congregation in Victoria, as well as being the new CUC Congregational Life Staff Person for BC and the Western Region, will lead us in a ritual designed to help us enter with intentionality into the spirit of this symposium. Reverend Ann. Thank you for that warm welcome. Um, I, I'm torn between whether it's a good thing or a bad thing that they're leaving right now. I think maybe it will free us up a little bit. Just wait and see. It has taken, now that they're here, I don't have to say unless you're a canoodler, it has taken us five years to get here. That's a really hard and so whether you came on wings or wheels or some other magical way to arrive here, I am just so grateful that we can all be together in this place. Now, I was invited to lead us in a ritual. But before we do that, I think we need to just let a little something go. So now, years ago, my wife and I were watching a video, and we learned about a trick that one of those animals do. So I'm gonna need you to help me. I know that some of you have been like sitting on planes or sitting in cars or walking hundreds of miles to get here, rolling along somehow. And for all of us who were at the annual meeting, maybe some parts of us are a little tight. So here's what we're doing. Do you know what ducks do when they feel stressed? They shake it off. So I need you to help me. You can do it in, you can do it in. Uni almost stole our thunder. Did you see that? It's a little tail. I want you to tighten up really, really, really tight if you're not already there. <laughs> and now I want you to shake it off. 
You too. Shake it off. All right. Do we need more? Or are you okay? Do you need one more? One more? If they ask for one more, you know it's important to listen to the needs. Okay. Tight. Shake it off. You feel those shoulders go down, those shoulder blades sink a little bit. All right. Now, some of you got a piece of paper on your way in, a piece of origami paper. But see, I have lots, so there's no feeling left out. I'm going to make it out to the doorway, and I'm going to have them here for you when you go to leave, if you didn't already get one. Every one of us is here because we are invested in Unitarian Universalism. And sometimes being invested can be challenging and a lot of work. But for this time together, when we're focused on the eighth principle, it's also a time of joy. It's a celebration. I want to lift up some of the tools we're going to use this weekend. We have a responsibility covenant that reminds us that we are doing the inner work so that we can be present to the public work. We have a community covenant which binds us together and reminds us that we are responsible to one another. We are interdependent. But to do this work, sometimes we have our own stuff that gets in the way. We might be worried about what we're leaving at home, somebody at home who's ill. We might be carrying a loss or a disappointment or an anger. Or we might know about ourselves that sometimes when the hard topics come up, we can get a little reactive. I do it. Feel a little tight. It might not always be appropriate to shake your butt. Okay, maybe it is, but you know, not everybody understands that. You have to teach them. But I want you to just sit. We're going to just take about 30 seconds of silence. And I want you to think about if there's anything that you're carrying that might be in the way of your full participation here this weekend? Is there anything that's just taken up real estate in your brain or in your heart, in your body? Anything you know about yourself that might be a little tough? We're going to stand, stay here for 30 seconds, and I want you to just identify what it is you may need to put down just for the weekend so that you can be fully present to this time. And maybe, especially if you come from a justice-seeking community, a justice-deserving community, somebody who's been underrepresented here, somebody who's felt the harm in this community, Maybe you want to think about it as, is there something you need to pick up to go into this weekend? Some strength or courage, the hand of an ally. So 30 seconds of silence. What do you need to put down or pick up so you can be present to this work and this joy? have a piece of paper. 
I don't need you to tell me your secrets. But I want you to put something on that paper. A word or a sentence or a picture or a squiggle, a symbol that you understand that symbolizes what you either need to lay down or lift up to come fully into the work and the joy of this weekend. And if you get it done in here, because I know some of you are packing a pen and you are ready to go. I'm going to be standing at the exit with this lovely gift bag that says, what do you need to lay down or pick up to be present and open this weekend? And you can tuck it in here, you can fold it if you want, or just put it in straight the way it is. And if you don't have a piece of paper yet, or you're not ready to do it, you have until lunchtime tomorrow. I'm not going to hunt you down. I'll leave this in the morning, sitting on the table in the lobby up in the foyer there. So you can put your paper in there. And then on Sunday, at our shared worship service all together, a little piece of magic will occur. Thank you. Thank you for coming to this work with your whole heart and mind and body. And thank you for being a part of strengthening and spreading joy. Thank you, Reverend Ann. Let us, let, us please, let us stand as you're willing and able. We're going to have another song. Please welcome Suzanne and Joe, and let us raise our voices in song. I'm going to lift my sister up. She is not heavy. Let's try that. I'm going to lift my sister up. She is not heavy. Second line is the same, uh, just one tone higher. I'm going to, we could do it together. I'm going to lift my sister up. She is not heavy. Third line the same, one note higher. I'm going to lift my sister up. She is not heavy. I'll teach you this part. If I don't lift her up, mm, we do that twice. If I don't lift her up, mm, if I don't lift her up, mm, third time instead of a hmm, it's a clap clap. If I don't lift her up, I will fall down. Let's do it together. One, two, three. I'm gonna lift my sister up. She is not heavy. I'm gonna lift my sister up. She is not heavy. I'm gonna lift my sister up. She is not heavy. If I I will fall down. 
first, I'd like to change to, we're going to lift the people up, because if we don't lift them up, we're going to all fall down. Can we make that change? We're going to lift the people up, they are not Thank you, Suzanne and Joe. A long-standing tradition of CUC gatherings is the recognition of the sacredness of the land on which our gathering takes place. For each conference or symposium, a small amount of soil has been gathered and is carried in a container. Here, to pass a container of sacred soil is Pamela griffin Hody from the Universalist Unitarian Church of Halifax. And receiving the container of sacred soil is Maury Prevo, the host team lead, who has brought soil from the meditation gardens at First Hughes campus in Ottawa. So although the conference in Halifax didn't take place in 2020, the soil did get there. And uh, now, it's, now it's coming to Ottawa, and I'm happy to add some nice, fertile-looking soil from our meditation garden. And to accept the container of soil from Pamela. Thank you. I mean, the soil's from Hamilton, eh? It's really, it's really, really dry. <laughs> Now we have come to the end of the opening ceremony. So please join me in welcoming the First Unitarian Congregation of Ottawa's lead minister, Reverend Eric Meter, who will do some closing words for us. Reverend Eric. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see you from up here. You still exist, right? Uh, you still exist, right? Yeah. All right. It is begun. After five years, we are together. We have arrived here with wheels or by wings to do some work together. Feel ourselves blessed in one another's company. You may notice I'm wearing glasses. You may notice, if you know me, I have hearing aids. These things help me. I need them. If you see an opportunity this weekend, if you need a little help, reach out and ask for it. If you see someone you think may need help, ask politely and take their lead on what they need because they know themselves better than we do. Safe space is necessary and so often hard won, but we're here to do together Something more than that as well as we explore the meaning of the eighth principle in our lives and in the life of the world larger than us. We're here to create some brave space together. So listen as deeply as you can. Stretch your ears. Stretch your willingness to speak 
from your own experience, the depth of your own heart. I can talk a little longer because the youth have already left. I was going to guide them to their bus. So you're getting a little more from me. This is our time together. Let's make it sacred, my friends. This is important time. And we are in such great company. Such great company. And with that said, let us rise. We have some more singing to do. One foot lead with love. Let our music leaders come forward one more. Ah, breathe deep. We call in the energy and the spirits together. All right, so thank you. For this song, I invite you to join me on the chorus every time it comes around. And for the verses, just echo right back what you hear from me. So I'll, th I'll sing through the chorus once in case you haven't heard this song before. And then we'll do it right away again so you can join me. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. One foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. One foot in front of the other and lead with let's try it again you gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love pull one foot in front of the other and lead with love you gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love pull one foot in front of the other and lead with love don't give up hope Gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with the foot. One foot in front of the other and lead with the. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with the foot. One foot in front of the other and lead with. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Don't you despair. Look up ahead. Look up ahead. The path is there. The path is there. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Ooh, one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Ooh, one foot in front of the other. And lead with I know you're scared. I know you're scared. Cause I'm scared too. And I'm scared too. But here I am. But here I am. Right next to you. Right next to you. You gotta put one foot in front of the other. And lead with the food. One foot in front of the other. And lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with a pool. One foot in front of the other and, and lead with love. And lead. Can we get some harmonies going? And lead with love. More? And lead with love. And lead with love. And lead with love. And lead. And so concludes our opening ceremony. The Confluence Lecture will be next, and so if you can meet back here for five minutes after eight, and uh, for Reverend Julie Stoneberg's Confluence Lecture. 
Enjoy the conference, or the symposium, I should say, everyone.